and welcome to Riddle Pace Field, the site of a midweek in-state rivalry game. The Troy Trojans will face the Jacksonville State Gamecocks here on what is setting up to be a beautiful night here at the ballpark. I'm Danielle Percival. Joining me tonight is Melanie Newman. Melanie, are you ready for some baseball? Absolutely. Let me tell you something. After the Trojans went on the road at Miami this last weekend, I think everybody's ready for some baseball to return back to Troy. Well, that's right. The Trojans do come into this matchup with a record of 13-18, and 18, but are on a six-game losing skid, whereas the Gamecocks, well, they sit at 12-18 and 18 and went 2-1 and one over the weekend. This is the second of two matchups between these teams this season and the only one here at Rental Pace Field. We are just minutes away from first pitch. Glad to have you with us. Stay tuned for Troy Baseball right here on Troy Trojan Vision. As Collins connects on that one. And it'll drop back at the wall. That'll send Hannah home and Pierce. And Collins is going to get all the way to third base with a triple. Only his second of the season. Another extra base hit. He has racked them up this season. Collins over there at a familiar base, third base, that being his position. I'm sure he's proud to be there right now. Absolutely. And of course, you know, we've got Boone Shear at plate right now. And nobody else has on their mind but getting Danny Collins home. Shear, an absolute power force behind the plate this season. That's right. Leading the team with six home runs, 34 RBI. Those two kind of go hand in hand. If you're leading in home runs, you're probably going to be leading in RBI. Uh, if you've got the guys on base, he's going to be well sending him, him home. home. That's right. <laughs> And of course, you know, right along with T. Ray Friday, the whole boom goes boom. He's definitely helped out the Trojans a lot this season. It's been a phenomenal performance. He's definitely been a key player for the Trojans as he connects on that one. And it gets way back there. But the center fielder is able to make the play and get the second out. But that's going to send Danny Collins home. So already the Trojans are up 3-0 here in the bottom of the first. But coming to the plate now is Creed Simpson, the senior from Auburn. So he's a hometown boy for them. And uh, he's hitting 327 on the year coming into this game, facing Brady, who throws that first pitch for ball one. Simpson has started all games for the Tigers so far this season. Hits that one deep. Out there, Boone Shear looking to make a play on it. But that one's gone. That is a home run for the second batter that Ryan Brady has faced. That's only the third home run Brady has given up. McHenry able to get out of a jam in the top of the sixth after giving up three runs in the top of the fifth. Had the bases loaded. They had some action going in the bullpen just in case he wasn't able to get out. The Tigers still on top, 4 nothing, with eight hits in the game. Count is one and two to Tella. McHenry doing a good job of getting ahead once again, starting off with a breaking ball this time. Showing uh, some good off-speed pitches. Tella's last at bat was a double to right and got an RBI. Got a hold of that one. Goodbye ball, touch them all. Second home run of the night for the Tigers. Second solo shot. McHenry not able to do anything about that one. Bennett went back there looking to try and make the play, but that one was well over his head. Taylor Burke probably had a pretty good view of it. He is, he is our camera guy out there in center field. 5-0 Tigers over the Trojans. Bringing to the plate Creed Simpson who is the man who hit the other solo shot that the Tigers had that led off the game, well, second batter in the first inning. So the one-two spot for the Tigers. Both of them have managed home runs. Welcome to Riverwalk Stadium in downtown Montgomery. This is normally the site of minor league baseball as it is the home of the Montgomery Biscuits, but today those players on the diamond are going to be a little younger. Their goal today isn't making it to the major leagues, though I'm sure that's on some minds. Today's goal is winning a state championship. The matchup today is the second game of the 1A championship series between St. Luke's and Shoals Christian. And what a first game it was yesterday. Shoals Christian entered the game on a 25-game playoff win streak, but the streak stopped there. St. Luke's won 3-2 on a sack fly in the top of the seventh to take game one. I'm Danielle Percival. Joining me for the broadcast is Taylor Burke. And Taylor, it's shaping up to be a perfect day out of the ballpark. 
a tale of two days, how different it can be as that one is crushed. And that's a home run. That is out. Three-run home run for the first baseman, Aaron Bowman. You can see the excitement. Shoals Christian has absolutely dominated so far today. It is 12 to 2 now. Four runs here in the top of the fifth. Three of those coming off the long ball by Bowman. Well, right now, you really want to get out of this inning. Two outs, Leary on the mound, a runner at first. It's 12 to 2. It's 10 runs. You don't want to allow them any more. And they're not going to get any more as Haskell comes up, the freshman making the play at third base, getting the final out of the inning, but not before Aaron Bowman goes yard. Gets the three-run home run. The Flame put four on the board here in the fifth inning. Inger is the left fielder for them. He's the one who had that double that got behind him, as you were just talking about. Don't let the ball get behind you. Well, he's going to send it to their left fielder, McCleary. Mosteller is going to round third, come home, slide in, no play at the plate. It is now an eight-run game as it seems like St. Luke's knew this is it. This is game time. We've got to score here. They've been able to play two runs with two outs. So definitely uh, showing a bit of life, a bit of spark as they've scored two runs here in the bottom of the fifth. Shoemaker gets that one, sends it to the second baseman who gets it over to Shipe in time, and that's the ball game. So two games wasn't enough. It's going to take three to decide this series. Shoals Christian battles back to take game two and force the deciding game three. They win by a score of 14 to four, managed 16 hits on the day. While St. Luke's was only able to put up six, it's definitely provided the perfect setup for a suspenseful game three, Taylor. Had a double that scored two runs in his last at bat. It was that double that went all the way into the corner that uh, Inger let get over his head and got stuck right in there in the corner and so if he can lay down another hit that goes similarly to that area he gets one to fall in the Close. gap and Inger is going to play it he's able to get in front of it though the runner Ooh, that's a wild throw. pitch and that may score that may be the ball game that's the ball game Shoals Christian wins on a wild throw back from out in left field Helmets are flying. It's exciting. There's a dog pile at the plate. Shoals Christian is able to take it. The three-peat is completed. The Flame are now the three-time defending champions in 1A baseball. The Flame burned through the playoffs going undefeated until they met St. Luke's. However, one loss didn't decide the rest of their season. You might not say that St. Luke's went down in flames, but they did go down to the Flame. Your 2012 won a state baseball champions, the Shoals Christian Flame. We are coming to you live from Trojan Arena because tonight is the night that Trojan basketball fans have been waiting for. But I don't think that anyone is as excited as this man who is standing next to me, head men's basketball coach Don Maestri. Coach, tonight is the big debut of this amazing facility. Well, it's uh, no question, Danielle. It's, it's a special night. We've, everyone's been waiting for this, not only our basketball team and the coaching staff, but administration, uh, students, uh, people that came by during the summer watching this beautiful place go up. Uh, it is a, it's going to be a great night for everybody involved. Now just what is the atmosphere like among your players? How excited are they to hit this court and be able to play the first regular season game? Oh, I, there's no doubt they're excited. I, I really think though that um, we've had the uh, exhibition game has helped us kind of get over the newness of the place. And we know we've got a heck of an opponent in Mississippi State, so you're going to have to kind of forget all of this stuff and play Mississippi State and not play the historical night, so to speak, and Mississippi State. Now, you mentioned it. It's, it's a big game, but you've also got a big opponent. Talk about uh, what your team is going to be facing in Mississippi State. Well, the great thing about it, uh, and we really thank them for scheduling the first game on the road for them because that makes our game much more attractive. Not only is it the first game in the history of this arena, but it's against an SEC opponent, which is the first time in the history of Troy, Alabama and Troy University. So it's really added to the attractiveness. I think it because of that, we'll have a, a, a great crowd, uh, hopefully almost a full capacity uh, in attendance. And, uh, I, you know, we'll have to really play well, but it's good that, that we have an SEC opponent. 
Now you mentioned the crowd. Just how big of a factor is that going to be in this game? If our kids um, can get over the early jitters, I think it could be a big factor, especially in the second half if we uh, are playing pretty well. You know, hopefully we get off to a decent start where we get some comfort in a, in a little bit of a comfort zone. And then in the second half, the crowd, there's no doubt that uh, being at home makes a big difference. Now, you mentioned having the exhibition game, getting kind of getting your feet wet, getting in this arena. You had a big performance from Hunter Williams. Uh, do you expect him to have another big performance tonight, or who are you looking to lean on in this game? Uh, we, one or two guys are not going to be able to just be the, the key to this game. <laughs> We're going to have to have the Troy team in this one. Uh, and Hunter, believe it or not, missed a lot of shots. So did Emil Jones, and those were our top two players in the last game. They'll have to be, play a lot better tonight, and the rest of our guys will have to play a, a, a very good basketball game for us to have a chance to win. Well, Coach, I appreciate you making okay, time to then. speak with us. Best of luck tonight. Thank you very much. Well, we heard from Coach Maestri about the atmosphere among the team, but let's get into a look at the matchup on tonight's game on the court.